So traditionally, an Ayurvedic doctor, the medicine you would get was be completely personalized. It was made for you. Vivek, a warm welcome to the Face Yoga Expert podcast. How are you doing today? I'm very well and I'm very happy and excited to be here. I'm very excited. I said this is my first podcast, so um, a learning for me. Oh, wonderful. Well, I like my podcast to be a very relaxed chat and also dive into everything to do with natural skincare. Um, My audience are very much into yoga, holistic wellness. So everything that you believe in with your brand, Kama Ayurveda. So I'm excited to get into it all. And I'd like to start right at the beginning, actually, and ask you, what was your inspiration for starting your brand, Kama Ayurveda? You know, it's interesting because I went to art school and my business partner, who we the, the we actually started the brand with, we both went to art school. So no business experience, so to speak. But we had done a packaging design project for the government. We we're both very interested in sustainability. And we'd done a packaging design project where we worked with village cooperatives and took village produce, which we packaged. But among the village produce was also soaps, uh, oils, uh, hand homemade shampoos, uh, lotions, etc. And we then learned because we were interested in like you know what is this? What are these products? We actually learned how these products were made. So that kind of gave us an in into how beauty products are made. This project finished; it was over. And then, literally a year later, we were in South India, and we with a friend of ours, who, and we went to an Ayurvedic pharmacy. So an Ayurvedic pharmacy in India is actually a hospital. Um, it's, a, it's an Ayurvedic hospital where patients, it's like a regular hospital where patients are treated with Ayurveda, i.e. with plant-based medicine. And what is interesting was that I found a bunch of researchers there uh, from America, um, and they were doing research into arthritis, rheumatism, um, and, and other bone diseases. And they found that there was results uh, in Ayurveda, which they were getting um, successful results, which they were not able to get with allopathic medicine. And that was kind of a trigger point that, you know, we've got this incredible science sitting in our backyard. I know nothing about it. I'm from the north. And, you know, what can we do with it? Because it's, you know, it's it's kind of isolated in this one in these in, in South India in this place. And, you know, how, how, how do we take it out? And that became the the I guess the turning point. And what we started doing was that, you know, one was we discovered that these were not kitchen remedy, kitchen, you know, kitchen recipes, you know, bit of turmeric, bit of this, bit of that, and you make a beauty formulation. But they were codified texts rooted in years of science, and there were clinical trials to prove that these products worked. It was a science. It was not a home remedy. A a science with uh, with centuries of documentation And that was the kind of turning point for this. So how do we take this and take it out to the world? So that is the genesis of the brand. Wonderful. I love that. And for anyone that doesn't know, what is Ayurveda? So Ayurveda was born in India. Ayurveda literally means life or nature. And Veda is a wisdom of knowledge. It's a sister science to yoga. So yoga literally means union. Um, and you breathe, so the union of your breath and your body, and to basically keep your body in balance uh, through exercise and breath, and your mind through meditation. And when your body goes out of balance is when you go to Ayurveda, to bring your body back into balance. So that is like the fundamental principle of Ayurveda. And this principle was created, it's an ancient system, and it was literally created by the study of nature. Um, and by the study of nature, with the goal of achieving health and well-being through balance and balancing the body. And also, I think what they realized then, which is what we are realizing now, that our body has a direct polarization with the mind. That a lot of this, that a lot of the issues which we have today, um, health issues, are specifically stress-related. You know, so if you have a calm mind, automatically a lot of those things are able to calm the mind. A lot of our issues will be able to go away. And these, so I guess they first, they were oral traditions, which then became written traditions. 
And these texts were written in the Ved what they call the Vedas. So the one for what well, this was called the Ayurveda, where they codified this knowledge. And they were codified about 2000, 2500 BC. And this is what, and these principles that were written then is pretty much what we follow today. So obviously modified, adjusted to modern day life, to modern day living, because obviously, you know, the world has changed completely. What we eat has changed. Uh, the universe has changed, but we are, you know, following this, this is the basic texts which are still being used, uh, you know, and adjusted for day to day life today. Absolutely. And there's three key doshas isn't there, or, or types. And I love actually, by the way, on your website, how you do a very comprehensive quiz to really understand your dosha type. So I definitely would recommend that anyone that doesn't already have an understanding of, of their dosha and what their personal dosha is to go to your website and check that out. Um, I'm really interested to know actually what your dosha is. You know, your doshas change. Yeah. Obviously, and depend, depending on what you're, so, you know, uh, depending on, I guess, where you're at. Uh, and if you're sick, then one particular dosha goes up and another particular yes. dosha goes down. And that is literally what means bringing, so that's what Ayurveda does. It treats that particular dosha to bring you back into balance. Yeah. So I am pitta heavy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's my nature. Yes. Uh, but, you know, it's, uh, as I said, depending on, so if you're, you know, if you're, if you're feeling stress, if you're feeling stressed, or you're sick, or you're having antibiotics, uh, uh, another one of your doshas will go up, mm -hmm. and then you go to Ayurveda to bring your body back into balance. Mm -hmm. So what Ayurveda is actually doing is it is not treating the cold or the headache; it's treating the cause. Yes, and that's the really interesting thing. So in, to traditionally, an Ayurvedic doctor, the medicine you would get would be completely personalized. It was made for you. So right now, you know, you have a ibuprofen, aspirin, you know, or a headache, and you have the same one, and I have the same one. But technically speaking, your headache could be caused by X reason, my headache by Y reason. So they would treat my headache by reading my pulse, figuring out what the imbalance is, and then giving me a medicine to fix that. So that is quite a unique. Mm. But obviously, you know, times have changed. Um, they can't do, you know, an extreme balance. So now when you go to a practitioner, Again, they will not make the medicine for you, but they will prescribe those specific medicines which are going to bring your those particular doshas back into balance. Yeah, it's wonderful. And also Ayurveda, of course, can be so fantastic for your skin. Could you tell me a little bit about why this is? I think uh, what we say in Ayurveda is that your skin and hair um, are an indication of your inner health. So, you know, where the exterior, the, the exterior of what your inner, inner health and inner well-being is. And that good hair and good skin can actually be achieved by, you know, healthy living, I guess. Which would be, I guess, day-to-day -day rituals, you know, which would be exercise, um, eating healthily, um, the right kind of exercise, the right kind of supplements, um, meditation. So things that are basically keeping your body in balance and that will keep your skin and hair in balance. You know, if I end up, you know, drinking too much or I'm eating too much fatty food, I'm going to get acne. If I'm stressed, I'm going to get something with my stomach, which will affect my skin again. It will also affect my hair. My hair will start thinning. So literally it's pretty much what, we, what they've defined is that your body the way we look also is a direct correlation of what's happening inside you. And that is basically adjusting your day-to-day -day life to bring your body back into balance so then your skin and your hair looks good mm -hmm. i think that 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 that's the most important thing it is but also that beauty you know is not um it's not a stagnant state it's a living state i, I think what we would say is to look good in ayurveda you basically keep your body in balance yeah and then you use the products. And the products, again, are, you know, products which are, there's no quick fix. We say best results in 12, 18, 21 days. And you need to continue using them. And what they, and also it's a ritual. So it's not only a ritual for, so it's on, it's also an application ritual. So, you know, you're applying a particular oil to your skin. So what happens is, okay, just for example, you know, 
Why am I getting bags under my eyes? The blood circulation is slowing down. I'm getting older. The blood circulation, like, like muscle, like, you know, you go to a gym, you lift weights, your muscle is toned. If you don't exercise, your muscle starts sagging. The blood circulation reduces. The muscle is sagging. So ditto, because the blood circulation is reducing, growing with age, what I start doing is I start massaging it, massaging it every day. The blood circulation comes back. The oils are helping, you know, bring all the healthy ingredients into my skin. So I get a natural plumpness and it starts coming back. The tonality starts coming back. So it's not anti-aging, but I guess it's the looking the best at the particular age you're at naturally. Absolutely. And that's completely what I believe and what I teach as well. And I loved how you mentioned about hair because that's something I'm really interested to talk more on today. And maybe you could talk to us a little bit about how Ayurveda can help our hair, can help us to have healthy hair naturally. So again, with hair, they say very specifically, uh, it's what you're eating. Now, obviously, people have hair issues. There are different kinds of hair issues. One is, you know, you have genetically, you know, male pattern baldness. Your 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 hair is prone to prone to fall. Other people are, you know, coloring their hair. They're straightening their hair. They're adding a lot of product to their hair on a day to day basis. So the hair is under a lot of stress. Okay. And why does your hair fall? Because basically the follicle stops, you know, the follicle becomes thin. Uh, the blood circulation to the follicle reduces and, you know, eventually the, the, the follicle closes and the hair will fall out. So in Ayurveda, what there is a recommendation is a regular, basically a use of massage to the scalp. So it's not hair massage, it's head massage. So application of hair, oil to the head on a regular basis, ideally, every time you wash your hair, which should not be more than twice a week. Uh, and the, so again, let, let, let's start at the beginning. The more we, the oil, the scalp produces natural oils. The more we shampoo, the more oil it produces. So you reach a point where you're shampooing it every day and it's producing that much more oil. So to break the cycle, I think the best way to do it is stand under the shower, scrub your scalp like you're having, like you're putting shampoo, but don't put shampoo. Just let the water come in. So you're scrubbing and it'll take about two weeks for the cycle to come back. So you're, you know, so it'll feel, it will feel greasy because your hair is producing the as much oil as it's used to every single day because it's used to being scrubbed off. But when you start, when you start, you know, it takes, so you feel a bit itchy and it's a big deal. You know, you have a slightly greasy looking hair for a few days or for a week or so, you know, just tie it up, whatever it is. But what ends up happening is that after this, you literally find you don't need to. Your hair is fine. The oil is producing is great. Um, and then pretty much every time you wash your hair, which is twice a week, you massage with a hair oil. What that does is it brings the circulation back to the roots. Blood circulation. So massage is important everywhere. Face, body, head specifically to bring blood circulation back to those areas. So blood circulation comes back, the oils come in and strengthen the roots. So the existing hair that has fallen is not going to grow back. But for example, the hair oils have, you know, amla, bringraj, and a bunch of other products, which will nourish the follicles, strengthen them, and reduce the breakage. Also, what happens is a lot of people, I guess, you know, there's a lot of hard water, um, you know, which is causing dryness, itchy scalp, scaly scalp. Uh, these herbs, which are in these oils, they promote scalp health. They reduce inflammation, increase blood circulation, and also, which will then long-term reduce dandruff, scaly scalp, itchy scalp, and things like that. So basically, you've got good scalp health and reduced hair fall. What we're saying is reduce the number of times you wash, oil pretty much every, and, and the oiling is important because you know the skin absorbs oil. And I think the thing to do is remember that we need to leave it on. 45 minutes ideal, hour, two hours, even better. So the longer we leave it on, the better it is. You know. Yeah. Also this, the, the, bring, uh, the Bringari hair oil, which we have, um, has one other incredible property. It's a natural property of the of, of the herbs that go into it. It's very cooling. 
terms of cooling. So the head feels cool and automatically you feel very relaxed. You actually have an extremely calm, relaxed feeling. That's amazing. And I'm very excited to try these products myself. I just got sent their hair products this morning. So I'm going to be using them this weekend. I'm very excited. The shampoo, the conditioner and the beautiful hair oil, well, may I say, smells gorgeous. And so, you know, there's no there's no artificial fragrance in that hair oil. That's the herbs that you're smelling. And the shampoo is made with the actives of the hair oil. It's a very mild shampoo. And the conditioner, and it depends how, you know, how, how thick and big your hair is. So, you know, you can use a conditioner. But frankly, a lot of people I know in India find once they've oiled the hair, they don't even need a conditioner. It depends, you know, on, on your hair type and, you know, what, what stage your hair is in currently. But they find that they don't necessarily need a, uh, they, they don't even need a conditioner. So great. And what's your favorite product from the range? So for me, the hair oil, the hair oil, I can't, and the shampoo. Because uh, what I, you know, it's it's interesting, you know, um, I actually work in making the products. And I worked in that for the last 20 years uh, with, the, with the Ayurvedic doctors and the regular doctors and the uh, clinical guys who do the trials and the, and the chemists who are working there. And, you know, you literally, it takes a while. It takes about three to four years to make an Ayurvedic oil. You're using an existing one because, you know, you don't, not only are you mixing it, but you also, it's a classical formulation. We're adapting it to everyday use, though the classical formulation is the same. But then also you have to do clinical trials to prove that it is this. So for example, this the particular hair oil that we make, the classical formulation says, use the herb for, its, for the Bringraj herb for it to be most effective when it's fresh. That means it's fresh only eight months a year or seven months a year. So we only make the hair oil seven or eight months a year. Mm -hmm. Because if I use it dry, the potency changes. Yeah. So we only make it so we have to produce enough of the supply. It's a nightmare supply chain, but to you know to make sure that we make this oil only the way the formulation says it is. So it takes a while to develop each of these products. And then you do the clinical trials, and then you actually realize what. You know, so like my hair, you know, for example, I have a family, so my, it's, it's, it's male pattern, baldness, father, grandfather. And I look at their pictures at the same age as I am today, and they had far less hair, you know. And so this is, it's managed to not go stop completely, but it's definitely reduced the hair fall. And, you know, and, and even when you're traveling, I find I take a little, uh, little tester thingy with me because like three days or four days of not using the oil, I find like my scalp starts feeling itchy. I start getting scaly scalp. And most, a lot of men have these issues. I don't know what women, but a lot of men definitely have these issues. Um, you know, it just, I just, I'm not carrying it with me all the time, you know, half an hour, 40 minutes, and it's yeah. its gone and it's clear. Wow. And, then, and, and then shampoo. So, so, so it's a pre wash hair oil. You apply mm -hmm. it, leave it on, and then wash off. Great. I love that. That's amazing. So you're almost having that nurturing, nurturing and nourishing ritual prior to even washing your hair. And that's what I love so much about Ayurveda. It's not just about treating yourself inside and outside. It's about the ritual side of it as well. And you know, it's interesting what that ritual does. It give, brings a pause to your life. Yes. Because you know what happens if you get up in the morning, you're rushing here, you're rushing there, you this call, phone, da, da, da. And then you have to pause. You stand in front of the mirror, you the oil in your hand, you massage it. You're massaging it for about five minutes. Those five minutes are yours. Yeah. You know, it's just that pause. You're feeling it coming into your scalp. There's a smell. You like you may like the smell, not like the smell, but there's a scent. It is mm -hmm. so basically it's, it's pretty much affecting all your senses because it's touching your hands. There's a texture feeling. It's coming into your scalp. There's a sensorial there. It's coming through your nose. There's a sensorial there. You're kind of enveloped in this. And when you're enveloped in this, you're sort of like it's a full sensorial experience. You're then forgetting about the call, the phone, the whatever it is. So those five, seven minutes of just that time to yourself gives your morning or evening whenever you're doing this a pause. It's kind of wonderful. Really wonderful. It, it really, really. Yeah. And 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 that actually starts happening with skincare too. You know, um, <laughs> depending on how you how you follow it. And um, you know, if you want to ask me my my um, skincare routine. Mm -hmm. It's very simple. Um, before I started Karma Ayurveda, I think I used the same soap to wash my face, to shave with, uh, to have a bath with, 
<laughs> it was about it. I was not exactly. I was not exactly. How do you say it? A heavy consumer. Yes. Uh, <laughs> but you know, you start making these products. I've got sensitive skin, so they. Took, I mean, I'm testing them. You know, mm -hmm. and it's amazing. So now, literally, I have. So my routine is this: I get up in the morning. Um, I, you know, after I shave, I wash my face. I shave with the same face wash, the geranium one, which you have mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. It's a great product. I wash my face with it. I shave with it. It's, it's easy. It's light. Um, and even though there's not very, there's not very much foam, foaming because it's natural, but it shaves very well. Your skin is soft enough. Uh, I have a shower and then I apply the Amarupa oil, um, which is, I spritz my face with water or with, with rose water. Very important that any product, I mean, ours, but any other product that you apply on your face, always apply to damp skin. Mm -hmm. It spreads easier. You use less product. The water evaporates. It sets sets better on your skin. You use far less product. So basically, spritz. Use two to three drops of the Amarupa. I massage it in upwards. That's it. Then if I'm going out to the sun, I might add some sun protection. If I'm inside, no. Mm -hmm. And then at night, I again wash again with the with the... Uh, with the face wash and at night I apply the kumkumadi mm -hmm. again spritz three to four drops and massage and you, and you sleep with that and you know it keeps your skin very well hydrated that's incredible you know your skin is plump it's sensitive it feels it doesn't feel hard it doesn't feel dry and you know I was in the UK recently for the store launch and it was cold compared to where I'm in India today mm -hmm. uh, you know so extreme temperatures uh, extreme temperature differences climatic differences uh, water differences, but I found that, you know, I didn't need to change the oil. And a lot of people, what they do is they find that it's very cold or the skin is very dry. You add two or three drops of the oil to the cream or add the cream after the oil, but use the oil as a base. And the oil actually works as a really good base, like a prep for your makeup. Yeah. So like two to three drops base. So it's basically protecting your skin and then you apply everything else on it. Great. That's amazing. And is, is there any other wellness rituals or exercise routines or yoga rituals that you personally do day to day? Very basic. So one is tongue scraping. Mm -hmm. I started doing it about I don't know, 30 years ago. I used to see my whole family do it. I didn't see the point of it. Yeah. But then I started doing it and you see the goop that comes out on that tongue yes. scraping. And you're like, so oh, much. My <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. Now that I've not taken it off. And it's morning yeah but literally you're taking the you're taking it's that's that's the first thing yeah take tongue straight um brush my teeth mm -hmm. and then have a glass of water yeah ideally warm but in india it's warm quite a lot so room temperature water i guess where you are or in a colder country slightly warm water mm -hmm. um, room temperature water a glass of it yeah. and there's a, the reason for that is again it's very simple you know you slept all night your stomach has a bunch of acid in it what the water is doing is it's diluting the acid and pushing it out. And then you can have your tea, coffee, whatever your normal routine is. Otherwise, you have a cup of you have acid in your stomach. You're adding a cup of coffee, which is more acid, into your stomach. And you've got this kind of like acidic mess, which is going to go up and down your, you know, esophagus. So that water thing, I think, is, is a good one. It also gets your intestines going, the, the, the entire, you know, your digestive system, which is sleeping. It wakes it up. Everything starts working well. That's one good thing. I think that's that's essential. So the tongue scrape, drinking the water, um, I think that's the starting point. And then personally for me, I you know I do an exercise routine and I do a morning meditation. And I've done this for a very long time now, almost 20 years, 25 years. And I find that um, I think is the best way to start the day. Even if you can do five minutes. Yeah. Just, you know, uh, I think if you people can't meditate, then just do a pranayam, just the yogic breathing for five minutes you know put your stopwatch on on your phone and do just the basic pranic breathing for five minutes mm -hmm. and very slowly very 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 slowly because that just brings your, and your eyes are shut your eyes are shut the eyes shut very important you're breathing very slowly so your entire concentration is on your breath your breath going in into your body coming out of your body so the clean air breath kind of going in the bad air coming out and you do this for five minutes you find it centers you uh, you can then do like two, three minutes of silence after that. 
um, just as a starting point. And of course, if you, as you, you know, decide to get into further, more deep, deeper meditation techniques, I think that's great. Mm -hmm. But I think that you'll find that it doesn't, you know, the stress doesn't change. The, the circumstances yeah. don't change. They are what they are. But I think you're just able to perhaps deal with them in a better way. Um, yeah. I don't know how it happens, but you just, I guess, less you get less irritated so quickly. You, uh, mm -hmm. you get less stressed so easily. That I think you're able to take on much more uh, without being so reactive. I think, and I think that then affects your gut because for me, my stress goes straight to my gut. Other people's stress goes to their hair. Other people's stress goes to their skin. People break out depending where your stress ends up at. You know, find that you have better gut health or better skin health or better hair, better hair health or whatever else is bothering you and whatever other issue, body issues you're having, that definitely gets reduced. Absolutely. And my final question for you is if you could share one top tip for inner peace, what would that be? Just this. You know, it's strange. You know, I heard this word, love yourself. And I was like, what is this rubbish? <laughs> <laughs> I was growing up, I was like, love yourself. I was like, oh my God, what, what does this mean? Like, 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 what is this stuff, you know? Um, it's not actually loving yourself, you know, that word. But I think it's taking care of yourself. Mm -hmm. And what, I think putting yourself first, and not in a selfish way, but what you find is, you know, you've got a life, you've got kids, you've got dogs, you've got problems, you've got a husband, whatever. You know, everybody has their own gamut of relationships or not or whatever it is and you find or work or whatever it is and you basically find that you're taking care of all of these people or all of these things and basically you come last mm -hmm. in this in this entire universe of things and perhaps if you flipped it and took care of yourself first so no matter this one has to go to school or that one has to do this you rearrange your life so you drop them to school and then come back and take half an hour out for yourself whatever you rearrange your life but you put yourself first you know it's always like i can't do this because i've got this to do or that to do or that i mean we all we all, we all like those are our lives today you know we all have a million things i'll do this later i'll do this tomorrow i can't join a meditation class i don't have the time i've got a million projects to do but then you know you decide for yourself at some point no i'll do the million projects because i have to do them that's part of my job but I will take this time out for myself every day mm -hmm. and force it. You'll have to force it. It's not going to be easy because you've been conditioned, you know, you've been conditioned for your entire life to work in a completely different way. So, you know, put, put it into your whatever calendar, literally put it into your calendar um, and into your alarm clock or however, whichever way you look at yourself. But I think this time of taking time out for yourself. And then when you start taking this time out for yourself, you then start figuring out, you know, what am I eating? What am I putting into my body? Um, what am I doing to my hair? What am I doing to my skin? Um, you know, all those things are coming out. You actually have some time for yourself. So your phone is off. Your phone mm -hmm. is not off. You know, it's off. So that half, you, you take the time. Start with 15 minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, one hour, depending on that. And then that actually becomes this idea of loving yourself, you know, which was, it took me a while to figure that out. Like, what does it mean, you know, this loving yourself? But it is. And it's, it is hard to do because, you know, uh, with our day-to-day -day lives, you know, it is hard to do because, you know, where's the time? And like, you get up in the morning and I, my, my day's already started. I don't even know what happened to it, you know. But you just say, no, stop. I will not look at a newspaper because, or the news because, or my phone. Because I get out of bed, if I look at that phone, there's some disaster happening somewhere and I'm like, idea is gone yeah no it's gone or you read something in the paper or you read something online or, and you're like mm -hmm. your mind is there on that and nothing else so just say no get out of bed Listen, you slept for nine hours eight hours six hours without knowing what's going on another half an hour will make a difference yeah big deal you know so take that additional half an hour and keep that stuff off and spend that time with yourself and then turn it on. That Those things are going nowhere. <laughs> yeah, going to, I agree. You know, I mean, you managed, to spend, you managed to spend six hours or eight hours of sleeping without it. Yeah. No, half an additional won't make a difference. So take that half an hour additional out. Do your stuff without that outside distraction. So that otherwise, when did you read that? Then for what meditation are you going to do? What breathing are you going to do? Because your mind has gone there. You know, then just, you know, this is fluff. So just continue doing this and then get to your day-to-day -day life. I mean, I find I do that now. I just don't look at stuff. Yeah. I, I, 
I start looking at stuff at, you know, half an hour after I've woken up and I've done my stuff, then I look at it. Definitely. So when I finish my, my, my clearing up my head. Yeah. So I, 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 yeah, 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 I, I would strongly do that. Just if there's one tip, just when you get up in the morning, don't start looking at your social media, phone, life. Just take that half an hour out for yourself and then get into that. Yeah, such a great tip. And if people would like to find out more about your philosophies, your brand and your gorgeous skincare and hair care range, where can they go to? So karmaayurveda.com and onto our Instagram handle, which is also karmaayurveda and take a look and see what's going on. Lovely. Thank you so much. And for the part, most important of all, yes. we have two stores. We have two yes. stores, a store um, at West Pond Road and we have a store at Harrods on the fifth floor. We have the Ayurvedic doctors there mm -hmm. who will give you a consult. So a consult on your doshas and a consult also. So it's not a skincare consult. It's a body consult on telling you basically, you know, how to live a healthy life, what, where, where you're out of balance. We also have treatment rooms where you can get a, a, head, a hair care treatment, face care treatment and body care treatments, both at Harrods and at West Point Road. And we've got a little cafe at West Bourne Grove with Jasmine Helmsley, who's doing all this yummy food for us, Ayurveda-inspired food. So yes. quite wonderful. So there are basically two little mini Ayurveda universes in the UK today. Amazing. I'm going to come and visit. Thank you, Vivek. Thank you so much for being a guest today on the Face Yoga Expert podcast.